Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Alex and in this video I wanted to give you a bit of an update because I know it's been quite a while so the plants that are usually on the windowsill as you can see aren't at the moment. I've got them in the garage because I've discovered a bit of a root mealybug problem going on again. Um, there was a plant here which had it, I think the Gaster, Gasterello tiger and so as a result I've just decided to be um, extra cautious because I have actually found a few more uh, lurking in this kind of area here. So I'm trying something a bit different. Root mealybug are really really difficult to get rid of um, as I'm sure some of you will know. Um, so what I'm trying is um, SB invigorator dips. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second um, and I'll take you over there. But essentially what I'm doing is um, filling up a big white bucket full of the uh, the solution so I've got some concentrate and I mix it with rainwater and then what I've been doing is just submerging the whole plant underwater for like 15-20 minutes and then leaving them outside to drain off so I'll show you what that looks like now but as you can see everything's looking pretty healthy um, I just wanted to be you know really sure that I got on top of it this time because it's it's such a pest to to get rid of so there we go so this is the stuff I've been using it's not necessarily designed for this purpose but I actually messaged um, kind, of an, kind of an expert in these matters and he recommended that I try this so um, yeah so all I did was take some rainwater put it in a bucket as you can see my nice pink gloves and then I've just been submerging the plant fully under the water in the solution then bring them out after about 15 minutes and we'll see how we get on with that so I'm just putting a lid on to stop any flying insects getting in there or my cat then once they've finished in there I'll move them over to this which is just a, a wire rack from a plastic greenhouse and then let them all dry off essentially so as you can see everything is looking pretty healthy um, but I wanted to be um, to play it safe. Some of the ones that were really quite bad, I've actually just decided to chop the roots off. So this has never managed to establish good roots. This varigata, because um, because of root mealybug in the past, I also ended up chopping the roots off this before I knew about the SP invigorator. So this is the Gastrello tiger, which had it really quite badly. So I've completely submerged that underwater. Uh, under the solution and then yeah so everything in here has been treated as it were as you can see this gymnocalisium has got a flower coming I'm not sure whether that will fully open now um, in the Buddhist temples so yeah that's what I'm currently on with at the moment so just outside the back door I've got my Chrysula ovata which I just decided to put out to give it some sun and it's looking really healthy. We've had tons of rain lately, this is the first day where we've had any decent sunshine. Um, but as you can see it, it doesn't seem to mind that at all, it actually looks really good. So there you go. It just shows you if the, if the mix is um, well draining enough, these plants will take days and days of rain without any problem. So that's that. And then over here underneath this tree we've got lots of Sempervivums which have come up into bloom, if it will focus, there you go, really nice blooms on them. If you don't grow Sempervivums I really recommend them because they, they do flower every year and then once the uh, once the main stem's flowered, they'll produce lots of offsets, as you can see. So we've got some really nice flowers at the moment in the garden. This borage, for example. And then we come over here to where I've got my succulents and other um, things that I'm growing. But as you can see at the moment, we've got this big sunflower here which I actually started off in March in my grow tent and as you can see it must be about 6 feet tall or more, 7 feet tall including the pot with these really nice blooms 
This is a variety called Chocolat. But yeah, so dotted around down here we've got some succulents. This is a, a type of grass petal, I'm not sure which one, but it has been in bloom uh, a lot. So it's just a bit of an experiment this year to see how the plants would actually get on in regular compost with um, kind of another tree sapping a lot of the moisture out of the soil. And the results have been kind of mixed. Obviously, um, the soil is far too nutrient rich, so they do etulate a bit, um, especially considering that these are kind of in, in part shade rather than full sun. This is actually pure compost um, that I made myself um, in the garden. So it's really, really rich. As you can see, it's supporting lots of apples. Um, so you do get etiolation. And the plants grow very large due to all the nitrogen. The only ones that have done particularly well and haven't stretched out is this um, Echeveria Black Prince, which looks really good, along with this one here. Then we've got this which I actually really like, um, Crisula platyfilla variegata, which is, which is so um, full of, of, uh, of nitrogen that it's just popping like crazy. And the variegation is very strong as well. And then you, you can see here this Sempervivum, which is just stretched out uh, with a, a little bloom starting to open right in the middle. And then some giant big grass petalum, which are just way, way um, over fertilized um, and then this is an Echeveri suya which is massive as well kind of looks like uh, an Aeonium um, I've forgotten the name but yeah. but yeah lots of flowers so that's a bonus and then I'll show you the ones which are actually growing in proper soil so over here it's kind of a mixture of all sorts, tomatoes and tomatoes and courgettes. But hidden amongst these on the top shelf here are succulents. So they're probably not looking their best. Some of them are quite etiolated because we've just had so little sun um, in the last few weeks actually. But some of them are doing really well. So these Echeveria Hatsu Koi Verigata look fantastic really good colours on them and hopefully you can see that even better this time because I'm shooting in 4k I'm actually about to get a flower on the Hatsukoi which I've never seen before so that'll be interesting um, so I'm not going to give you a full tour and kind of name everything but I just wanted to do this video as a bit of an update because I know I've been a bit lax lately and I've got a 10 minute time limit on the 4k so um, I wouldn't have time anyway But yeah, as you can see I've got loads of stuff and I'm going to be putting things up for sale soon um, because I don't have room to put all these in my room. I ended up chopping the top off this Graptoveri um, Tichiband, Verigata, um, and the top is over here. Just because it was getting a bit etiolated and as you can see we've got some pups forming at the top and bottom. So yeah. Lovely little Kalankoi Fetchen Koi Verigata there. Pearl von Nuremberg and the Chroma coming into bloom. And then um, the Sedum Adolphii. And then we've got these tiny, tiny little Astrophytums which are actually growing really well. I've moved them into a mix of um, regular compost with some grit and pumice and lava rock, and they seem to be doing really well. Over here we've got a few more things, Echeveria, Crisula. Um So yeah, I'll do another video soon where I show you everything properly, but I just wanted to do an update and show you where, where everything was, so I really hope you've enjoyed that video. Give me a thumbs up and um, leave some comments down below and let me know if you enjoyed this kind of quick update. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next video, so thanks for watching.